so in recent years, we have seen a few changes in the way we approach first-time obstructive cats. I think probably one of the biggest changes is an emphasis on pain management for those cats. So sooner rather than later, we're thinking of getting some analgesic uh, drugs in, into those guys. So um, that's definitely beneficial. Um, there also has been a couple of published papers on some uh, tools and techniques to use. So one is using something called decompressive cystocentesis. And what basically that means is when we have those obstructed cats that are really in bad shape because, you know, some of them when we get them are not, not that sick, if the owners know this recently. Others might be actually quite compromised. Uh, with very large bladders and uh, and uh, uh, and uh, associated uh, problems, and so for those worst case cats, sometimes we can buy some time to stabilize them by emptying the bladder by a cystocentesis before we do anything else. And the reason behind that is once the bladder is empty, uh, then you have some time to run some lab data uh, to get some fluid therapy into these guys. Um, certainly the pain management, maybe correct some of their abnormalities, they often have high potassiums, for example, uh, before we undergo anesthesia, because that the key is really to stabilize them. And with a full bladder, it's hard to do much stabilization. So there has been some nice data published to show us that that actually can be a very safe technique. So that's a really interesting um, tool. And the other one is increasingly we see veterinarians using local blocks such as uh, a type of epidural block called a sacrococcygeal block. And they're very easy to do. They provide some local anesthesia to the perineal area, the lower end of the urinary tract. And it means that for some of those cats, instead of general anesthesia to place a urinary catheter, we can do it with sedation and a local block. So these are some really nice refinements that have helped us, I think, save lives, actually, because uh, we have more safe patients, and uh, we don't necessarily have to have general anesthesia for every patient either.